I'm Jane Stafford from Jane Stafford Textiles on beautiful Salt Spring Island, British Columbia. I am a weaver of 45 years and I've had a long association with Louette in Holland. I'm probably their biggest fan and I'm a huge fan of Jan Louette who is the designer of all their looms, spinning wheels and accessories. And that's why I'm here to tell you about the David III loom. In 1988, Jan designed the original sinking shed loom and named it after the biblical character David. The David is small but mighty. It provides a shed like a countermarsh loom, meaning both parts of the warp are equally tensioned when the shed is open. The original David had an overhead beater like many European looms, but in 2010, the overhead beater was switched out for the gliding beater that has been on all David looms since. And now, because Jan is an innovator who is never done, we have the David III. So this little video is going to go over a few of the finer points in the redesign, and I know you'll be impressed. So let's get started. So here we are, standing between the David II and the David III. Um, the first thing that you'll notice right off the bat is that the stature of the new David is much bigger than the David II. Now this is, this actually was a David I, and these pieces right here, just out of interest, uh, is where the overhead beater would hang from. So there was another attachment here, and then the overhead beater came down like this. And, and then we went to the gliding beater, which is right here, and on the new loom we have a floor slung beater. But in general, you'll notice that this loom is smaller, much smaller. The dimension of the wood is much larger here. Well, not a lot larger, but a quarter of an inch for the treadle board and for the front posts and the main beam on both of these looms. So smaller, bigger. I think what I'll do is I'll start at the top of the loom and talk about all its features and then we'll move down and occasionally we'll do some comparison between the two of them. But let's just focus on this. Um, this feller is 44 and a half inches tall and this one is 46 and a half inches tall. So it got a little higher. The breast beam or the, yeah, the breast beam here is 31 inches and on the original it was 30 and a half. So not too much of a height difference here. But let's look inside this loom and see how it works. I'm gonna show you how this sinking shed action works. Um, you just pop the lid off here. If I pop the lid off the loom, we can look down inside and see that there are eight springs. And those springs are attached to Texolf cord, which come down and attached to the shafts at the side of the loom here. All David looms come standard with eight shafts. So that's why there's eight springs in here. When I step on a treadle, what happens is the treadle pulls the shaft down the springs inside the castle open, and then when I take my foot off the treadle, the springs retract and bring the shaft back up. So it's such a simple, elegant system, easy to treadle, and they just pop right back up like that. Easy peasy. The shelf pops back in nicely, easily. It has a nice lip on it. This is, this is perfect. A nice lip so nothing will fall off. Now, all Louette looms have a built-in rattle at the top. So we warp over the top of the loom. These are guards that keep the warp threads in place. So imagine that I'm dressing this loom. I have my leaf sticks inserted here and the entire warp chain goes over the loom. It makes it so easy to be able to stand here and take all of the little bouts of warp threads and pop them into your rattle to help you get everything spread out to the desired width of, or whatever your cloth width is going to be. To, pre to prevent the threads from popping out of the rattle, we have these little guides, or guards. I guess they're guards. <laughs> they're guarding those warp threads, keeping them in their place and you just slide them on. So that's kind of cool. Then of course, when the whole warp is beamed on, uh, you pop everything out of the rattle, drop everything down, and you're ready to thread. 
Another thing that I love about the, this uh, version of the David is that the heddles move uh, much more easily on the shaft bars. So um, that, that makes threading so much easier when the textile heddles just slide along. So love that. My favorite feature on this new loom is the beater. The beater is uh, a full floor slung beater. It pivots from the base of the loom right down here. And it sits on these little hinges that, come, that are in the frame of the loom. And it allows you to lift the beater right up out of the loom when you want to thread. So that's super handy. And those feet are adjustable. So if you want to get just the perfect uh, support for the bottom of your shed, all you have to do is either turn them up a little bit or turn them down a little bit. And we always want to make sure that the bottom of the shed is sitting on our shuttle race. So that's great. The handle on the beater also forces the weaver to always beat from the center. And that's great for the felivar cloth because the beater is always coming down right smack dab evenly across the entire width of your cloth. The breast beam also lifts right out of the loom. So you can get super close. I'm, you know, I'm just taking that off. I can also show you that uh, the holes are countersunk here. So it makes it really easy to pop it back on. There we go. So to thread this loom, you can get right up close and personal. You can take the breast beam off, you can take the beater out and sit right inside. And if you needed to get even closer, I don't know why you would, but just say you wanted to get even closer, even the cloth beam lifts out. Now I can't do that because I've got my warp all tensioned, but the cloth beam lifts right up and out of the loom. So that's great. Um, the cloth beam and the warp beam at the back of the loom are made of, uh, larger dimensional wood on this loom too. So uh, one little thing I wanted to point out is a close-up of how cool the ratchet and pawl are. So the ratchet right here on the loom is much larger, but down here the pawl that engages with the ratchet has a tiny little magnet mounted right down in here that makes sure that the pole always stays engaged in the ratchet. It's a two-part uh, pole system. There's one at the back and one at the front. So it really holds this beautiful ratchet nice and tidy, keeps everything strong and secure. Let's have a look at this side of the loom. Here we have our brake release right here. And this is what controls the friction brake on the loom and it's a big beautiful disc so it's it's the same system that's on the spring loom and this handle is the same that's on, as what's on the spring loom so to release the tension on your warp you lift up on this handle it's big easy to grab closer to the weaver and uh, it releases the brake cable that goes around this disc and winding on a warp is so easy because this handle here turns. So it's super easy. Love it. Huge improvement. To uh, adjust uh, the tension on the brake, all you have to do is move this little world nut until you have it exactly the way you want it. So that's a very easy adjustment. Let's have a look at the treadles and the lambs on the new David. So, uh, the David has 10 treadles underneath it, and the lambs have got uh, all the tie-up cords permanently mounted to the lambs. So on every lamb, there's 10 tie-up cords, and you can just slide them along and put them wherever you want them to be. I have some stored here, I have some stored down the side, but they just slide in wherever you want them to be, in and out of the way, and that's really, really handy. Now, the other thing that has changed on this loom is that the screw heads that the Texel cord attaches to are smaller. And so it's so easy to just attach that cord on and off, like that quick. I generally use my finger to push down on the lamb 
that I'm tying up and then it's one, two, three, four. So I find my fourth screw and then pop it on. So that's really nice that it's so easy to move our tie up cords and so easy to attach those tie up cords to the treadles. So now I'm gonna show you how this back beam folds right up to the castle. And it allows you to fold the loom up and it will fit through any standard size door. That's great. All we have to do is come down here and we have a threaded um, screw here, which goes in, it's feeding into a barrel nut that's embedded in the upright. And as soon as it comes all the way out, I've undone the one on the other side, nothing falls off. We don't have to worry about losing any of our hardware. This just folds up like that. Now, if we wanted to keep this loom closed, we could come here and just crank forward. Oops, sorry. Um, and our warp is holding it shut or we could take a piece of same twine or some such thing and just tie it shut. So that's pretty handy too. That's really handy. And then to open it up again, all I'm going to do is, because my warp is holding it, I'm gonna just come to the front of the loom and release the ratchet. There, take the paws out, and there it goes. <laughs> Boing, it's back down, and these screw in like that. There, so they're tight. So there we have it, all the lovely little changes to the David Three. great changes. Um, as I said, Jan just keeps making things better and better and congratulations again on making the David absolutely fabulous. I love it and so will all our weavers out there. So I think I'm just going to sit down now and weave and you can watch the loom in action and I hope this has been helpful. Mm -hmm.